friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. So I left off last time at a bit of a cliffhanger. We are still building our photo gallery app using Angular Dart and Aqueduct. So in this video, we are going to resume where we left off the other time, um, beginning to interoperate with Materializer's Date Picker um, JavaScript API. So we're going to continue with that and then tighten up our validation a bit. So not going to waste your time any further. Let's get into it. Because we're using the materialize framework, I will set the context of this interop to be within the M object, which means here now I can say we want date picker dot init. So whatever we define is a proxy to date picker dot init method. We need to mark it as external because the implementation is not within Dart, it's outside of it. And uh, let's create a function called init date picker. Now this takes in an element and then it takes in some options as well. But for now, let's just leave it as such. And we need to import the HTML library, which has got the element class. And also we need to define a return type for init date picker. So if we go back to the docs, so the return type of our date picker is an object that contains it's an object that contains these methods. So we've got open, we've got close, we've got destroy, for instance. So what we can do here is we define the return type as date picker, and then we'll define our date picker class. And in here, let's just define the destroy method. We we'll mark this as void rather. Okay, so now let's come to our form and then in here we can initialize our date picker and then we'll query select our publish date field. So let's give this a go. Okay. And nothing seems to happen because, because at this part of the life cycle, the view is not fully loaded yet. So we can we can use another one of Angular's lifecycle methods. I think there's one called after, after view checked. So let's try that one. And then let's just move this down here. And let's try again. Okay, so now it's actually initialized, but when I click this field, nothing happens, which is because there is a conflict between what ng model and I think ng control and ng form is doing to this field. So they're somehow conflicting with it with each other. It's a common problem. So what I have as a workaround is, is to essentially hide this field and then I'll create another field for our date picker. And I'll move this ID here and let's try that. And yeah, once I click it, we get this model and then I select the date, I click OK and then I populate it. All right, cool. All right, cool. What happens when I click submit? Okay, this is what happens. So although we populated that field, the ng model for the hidden form control is not aware of this value. So what we can do is we can have a change event and then we'll invoke a method called on date picker update. Then I can pass the the change event object in here as such. So I'll save that. And then let's go ahead and define this method. And then the parameter it gives us is of type event. And I'll just name this dollar event. And all we're going to do here is amend the gallery objects directly, in particular the publish date. And then we'll do event.target.value. And value is not defined because we need to cast this as an input element such. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, so if I click that and then I select a date, populate it, and when I click create, okay, it still shows that. Let's go to date picker update method and let's log out the publish date and let's see what we get. Okay, so we get something back. Oh, okay, it's in the wrong format. Yeah, that's why I was throwing an exception because it needs to be in this format and we are getting the wrong format. Okay, so let's go back to the docs and I think we can set a format as an option for our date picker. So that is the second argument we pass in. Okay, 
So if we come to materialize and put our options, now we can't do map because dot maps are opaque when it comes to JavaScript. It doesn't translate to JavaScript objects. Because of that, we need to create a class that gets annotated as anonymous. So we'll call it date picker options. And then before we create that class, we'll have the anonymous annotation followed by the JS annotation. And then we'll create our date picker options class. And we just need to define an external factory constructor. This constructor will take some optional named parameters. So for now, we just need the format option. Okay, so I'll come back here and then we can pass in our date picker options. And then we can specify the format and our format is going to be the year followed by the month followed by the day. All right, let's check this in the browser. Okay, so I'll select a date and then it gives it to me like that. So that's correct. And if I hit create gallery, so that's now valid and that will be invalid and that should just work as expected. And I'll just quickly make this optional search. Okay, so although this works, ideally it would be nice to implement this in a way that is reusable. So I'm going to refactor this and instead we're going to create a a directive that would hold this functionality. So under common, I'll create a directives folder and then under that folder, I'll create a new file called date picker dot dot. And then in our date picker, I'll import dot HTML, I'll import Angular, I'll import our interop solution. And then I'll use the directive annotation. And this directive also requires a selector and I'll use the attribute selector for this one. Search and let's define our date picker directive class. And then we are going to implement two of Angular's lifecycle methods. So we want out of view checked and then on destroy. The first instance member we define is our date picker reference. And then I'll have an override method for ng out of view checked and in here we will do that essentially so i'll cut that and then let's assign that to our date picker and then secondly we will define our on destroy method so when this when we leave the page the on destroy method gets called and what we want to do is we want to invoke the destroy method so if you remember, we defined this one over here. So I'll save this. And then in here, I'll import the directive. Okay, so we can add that to our list of directives. And so I'll come back to the gallery form template. And then, and then we can instantiate our directive by adding the date picker attribute, which is what we defined as the selector. So let's check this works. Okay, so that still works. Okay, cool. I guess we can improve this a bit more because right now we are hard coding this ID. So it's not really reusable. So I'll define a couple more properties that this directive would accept. So we'll annotate those with input and then it will expect an element and we'll say date picker element and in fact we only need this one so in here i can do date picker element it's not equal to null so it's been defined then we can pass it in here and also we can check and also we can check that date picker element is an actual element and let's make sure nothing broke okay that looks good and then in our gallery form template, we need to define our date picker element. So we need to pass in a DOM reference in here because that's what we are expecting. And let me format this a bit more so that it's legible. So like that. So what we can do is we can pass a DOM reference of this input in here. And we just need to do 
the picker lm. So this gives us a reference to the DOM node for this input, and we just need to pass that in here. There's something wrong. Need to mark it as such because that means that it's accepting an expression rather than a literal string. Okay, so that should be good. Okay, that seems to work. All right, cool. I guess the next improvement we can make is we see the validation message, but the line is not turning red. So if I go back, it's as easy as just selecting this part, cutting it, and placing it on here. So when I save that, and I come back here, and I hit that, yeah, now we see the red line. We populate it. Now it's green. And when we populate that, that also becomes green. If I hit that, then we get our options. Of course, description should just work. And there we go. So there's one more thing I want to do um, around these field labels. And you probably spotted it earlier, but I'll show you what the issue is. So if we come here and then we set a title, for instance, then I reload the page, we see the title here, but then the label is not at the top. And to move the label to the top, we need to add a class called active as such. So like that. And because of the active class, now the title is moved out of the way. Let's have an attribute binding on the active class. And we want to add a class of active only when our gallery's title is not empty. So if there's a title, then the active class will be added, which will move the label out of the way. So if I refresh, it looks like that. And let's do the same for our publish date. So now if we set our publish date as such, and then I reload, we get that. If we come to our materialized documentation, we need to set a default date, which is of type date. Let's come back here and, and what we'll do is we'll have a conditional check. So if we have a publish date and it's not empty, if it's not empty, then, then essentially we convert the publish date to a date time object. But before we get to that, let's define our default date here. And then we'll come back to our materialize interrupt file. And then under options, we need to define our default date option. And it's of type date time. So once that's done, we can come back here now, and then we'll set our default date to a datetime object. So we can do datetime.pass, and then we'll pass in the publish date. So once that's done, we need to pass this to our date picker directive, where we are initializing our date picker. So we'll define another property. And they will expect a date time string. And then the property will be called default date as such. And then here we can pass that in like so. So since we've got that here, well, in fact, let's rename it. Let's call it date picker default date. We can have that in here. And then we'll pass in our default date. So let's test this out. Okay, it's still empty. What we need to do, in fact, over here is we need a binding on the value of this field to our gallery's publish date. So this was what we were missing. 
So I'll do that. And then let's run this. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to our option. Do we need to set this as well? Make the default date the initial selected value, which is a boolean. Okay, let's set this option as well. We'll set that option in here. And then in here, we'll set that to true. I think we have what we need for this part. I will get rid of this and save that. And then I'll get rid of this bit after view checked. We don't need that anymore. Then I'll save that. Okay, let's try this one more time. If I hit create gallery, it flags up as such. If I enter a title and I choose a date, it's now green, which means we should be able to submit some data. Uh, let's add a description. And they're all over here. Okay, so this brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you are not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so that you do not miss out on any updates. If you've got any feedback, if you've got any general questions, also let me know down below in the comments. Thank you.